whenever we're dealing with a system with positive feedback, our rules are going to differ slightly for sketching the root locus compared to what we saw previously for our negative feedback systems. So the rules that we're about to write, we can compare to our previous notes on pages 7-8 and 7-9, which were for our negative feedback systems. So negative feedback. But of course here, what we're going to look at is our positive feedback systems. So we're still gonna have five rules and we're gonna see that two of them are going to change slightly while the other three are exactly the same. So the first rule, we're going to see no change here. And so what our first rule said was that our number of branches in the, in the root locus is equal to the number of poles of our closed loop transfer function. So number of branches is equal to number of poles of our equivalent transfer function t of s. We also see no change in our second rule. And so our second rule said that our root locus has to be symmetrical about the real axis. So symmetrical about our real axis. So our third rule, which is a little lengthy, so I've gone ahead and written it ahead of time, is one that has changed. And so now we have that our root locus exists on the real axis to the left of an even number of real axis finite open loop poles and or finite open loop zeros. So this is the same wording we saw for our negative feedback systems, except for now we're talking about to the left of an even number of these items. So we still need to, be, still need to keep in mind that these are real axis finite open loop poles and or real axis finite open loop zero. So those things are still very important, but the only thing that has changed now is we're talking about being to the left of an even number of them. So for our fourth rule, we also have no change. So no change here. And so basically what that is saying is we were starting at poles and ending at zeros. So start at poles, both finite and infinite, and end at zeros. So that means our fifth rule is also going to be changing because I said two of our five are going to change. So there's only a slight change here. So we have the same real axis intercept. So remember rule five only comes into play if we have either infinite poles or infinite zeros. So same real axis intercept. And so that was our sigma a. And so we had an equation for that uh, given previously for our asymptotes. But now we're going to have a new angle equation. So we have new angles, which are going to be given by the following equation. So our angles are going to be theta sub a, which is equal to k, and this is lowercase k, divided by two pi, divided by the number of our finite poles minus the number of our finite zeros. And so the denominator is the same, but we've just adjusted that numerator. And so in this case, our lowercase k, which again is different from our gain k in our system, is going to be zero, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and so on. And so recall that this angle is going to be given in radians. And so those are the adjustments. So we see changes to our third and our fifth rule. So our first, second, and fourth rules are going to stay the same. And so we're not going to look at any examples of this in class, but if you wanna get some practice with this, you can look at example 8.9, which is on page 338 in the eighth edition textbook. And so that's a good example to look at too, because what it shows is it goes back to this idea that this positive feedback system, and therefore our rules for sketching it, are the same as a negative feedback system with negative gain.